Hey, Joe, I'd love to see you again, albeit through technology this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with that map on your wall there. It looks, uh, it, it, it kind of makes me feel like I need to start doing some decorating or something. Yeah, we need to do some decorating and turn this into a gym and not the playroom anymore, but it makes a lovely backdrop, so yeah, I'm not going to do too much for us to go over it. So obviously last time we were together, we were at the clinic and we had a really busy morning seeing a whole variety of women with pelvic health and other considerations. So the lockdown obviously changes the dynamics somewhat, but I know you guys are still super busy. So tell me a bit more about what you're doing in the clinic at the moment, how you're using Yeah, so... I think, I think like for most people, it was, uh, I suppose it came as a shock to us all really that uh, suddenly COVID-19 kind of moved westerly through, you know, Italy, France, Spain, and then had such a, a dramatic effect here. So we closed the clinic probably quite early, probably earlier than, than a lot of other places. So we closed kind of before the lockdown because yeah. we just felt it was the appropriate thing to do. Uh, so... Just saying, it's um, responsible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we, so we felt we were being responsible at kind of closing. I think we were, we were in a fortunate position in that in the past we'd always seen a lot of uh, kind of patients, uh, kind of female pelvic health patients, both pregnancy, uh, kind of new mums, mums with older kids, female pelvic health. So we'd seen a lot of those patients, obviously from the Birmingham West Midlands area, but we'd also seen some from you know from other parts of the UK. And we'd seen a lot of male pelvic health from kind of, you know, all over the UK, Ireland, couple from Europe. So with those patients, we had been doing some online appointments for a couple of years. Okay. So what we then decided to do is, is just to really offer those online appointments to our existing patients and also our new patients. So I think probably the big change now is that obviously we're not doing any face-to-face -face appointments and we're doing just a lot of uh, kind of appointments, mainly through Zoom. We do some through Skype because some people, uh, we've had a few patients who just prefer Skype, but it's mainly through Zoom. And so I did a couple of big clinics this week and then Lisa did a big clinic. Um, and that's been going really well. And I suppose like all the mums out there, all we have adapted as well, a bit like you have, Kerry. And it's, it's so far, it's going really well. It's been really enjoyable. And we feel as well that we're, you know, we're still available to those women who need help. And even though COVID-19 has changed everything, you know, people are still getting pelvic girdle pain. People are still getting quite significant tummy gaps postnatally. People are still getting, um, you know, low back pain postnatally. So, so those problems are still there. And, I think, I suppose, as we've talked about before, mums can be quite slow to look after themselves okay. because they almost prioritise everybody over themselves. <laughs> and I think at the moment, you know, there is a lot of anxiety, there is a lot of stress, there is a lot of uncertainty uh, due to COVID-19 and that that just makes all of those conditions much worse it kind of it it really can lead to an exacerbation of them whether someone's got uh, bladder sensitivity yeah. whether someone ha has some uh, postnatal low back pain whether someone has some pelvic pain whether someone has a bowel problem this this uncertainty really makes that worse fuels that so I suppose one of my main messages is that, you know, rather than putting off looking after yourself and getting those conditions sorted out, I, I, you can still do that now. And it's important to do that because some people might think, well, I will, I'll look after myself. I'll get treatment for this tummy gap or this urinary problem after COVID-19, but we don't really know when that's going to be. So it's, it's, so I think I feel, uh, Really, you know, really happy that we are still providing the specialist service that we've always done. Yeah. And that we've been seeing some, you know, lots of pregnant postnatal ladies, uh, and that's been going really well. And the fact that you've been doing this for a long time now online as well, and that it's not a new thing, you must have that process um, and that assessment much more refined now. So obviously, it will look and feel slightly different, but how are you still working with clients in terms of? 
assessing things like pelvic floor, given that there's no internal, there's no ultrasound, that's slightly trickier now for you. Yeah, so it's, it's, I think it's definitely different, but I think, so you, you, you've seen me work because we, you know, we saw all those patients that morning in the clinic, uh, even though that was a bit different because we saw that we saw them for a shorter period of time. So when we would normally see a patient for a, an hour, uh, you know, a good part of that hour is, is a lot of the detailed questioning about, well, what type of birth did you have? Uh, was there any birth trauma? You know, did you have a forceps? How was the recovery? What type of symptoms are you getting? And I think if you've seen patients for long enough, you, you kind of build up of patterns of how different conditions present. So you can, so if someone's had a forceps delivery, you kind of know that they are at a much higher risk of having a prolapse. Mm -hmm. If someone's had a, maybe a grade four tear, you can kind of almost assume that they're going to have some bowel dysfunction. They're going to have a much higher incidence of urinary dysfunction and a much higher incidence of prolapse. Also, if, if someone's complaining of that their tummy looks a bit funny, that it's bulging out when they come up from lying, that they're getting sensitivity around their tummy, you're probably thinking, well, they'll probably have a tummy gap and we can get them to measure it themselves. Yeah. But I think what we do is we, we spend a lot of time with the questioning, just you know, asking, well, what's going on? What symptoms are you getting? Uh, how long have you had it for? And that kind of gives us a good idea as to maybe what condition they have. I think this is actually having the extensive experience that you and the team have got. Whilst you can't assume everything, your experience gives you so much of a guide as to kind of what's happening there. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I, I think it's, it's, probably easier to do well it is easier to do online pelvic health physiotherapy if you've previously done it for quite a long time it's a bit like it's a bit like you've done pregnancy and postnatal exercise for a very long time it's probably not the time to be starting doing it it's, it's almost that it's a time where you need to see someone who's experienced someone who's either seen in your case a lot of exercise clients and in, and in my case and in my colleagues case that you know we've seen kind of thousands of patients with these types of presentations and I think the, the the feedback has been really really good you know we had a really beautiful kind of google review last week where one of the ladies Rachel said that you know she found it reassuring that she could still get help yes. post yeah, absolutely. And she also felt that she now had had a very clear idea of what was going on, why she was getting those symptoms, yes. and also what she could start to do for those, but also what she could modify at home to, to kind of take away those things that were making things worse. So and I, I think that's, that's, that's really the feedback that we've been having, that, that it, it helps with that added anxiety around the condition to know that you're doing something for it. Most definitely. I think that's all anybody really wants, isn't it? Is a steer in the right direction. How do I help myself and to know that I'm doing the right thing and not harming myself? And yeah, have, exactly. Have you seen an uptick in things like your mummy and services? Because again, the NHS, bless them, are working full out capacity. Um, but for GPs to have the time that new moms need to talk through those concerns at the moment is particularly challenging for them. Mm. Yeah, I think it's been, I think it's been, it's been interesting as to what's happened in that, a bit like we've discussed before, although this is a really, uh, this is a difficult time for people who have a new baby. And this is a difficult time for people who've maybe got an older baby, who've got toddlers, Who've, who, who are combining looking after a baby with maybe homeschooling, um, homeworking, their partner might be homeworking or their partner might be a key worker or they might be a key worker. But it's also giving people a little bit of time yes. to make those appointments so that people aren't thinking, well, how am I going to get to Sully Hull or Kings Heath or Harborn? So now it may be that their partner is at home, yeah. that they can you know, take some time out from what they're doing and that mum can have that appointment online. Yes. 
I think so I think that's almost been an, uh, kind of an unexpected kind of side effect. I think we're also seeing patients who uh, maybe were planning to have an, uh, uh, maybe a postnatal physiotherapy appointment elsewhere. And because of the real shift in emphasis in the health service, and rightly so to COVID-19, that they're then seeking out uh, uh, kind of help in the private sector. Yeah. I think also uh, people are, you know, probably for a couple of reasons. One, we've had really strange good weather. Yes. And people are being encouraged to get out and exercise. So I think that's also encouraging people to think, well, you know, maybe, maybe I would enjoy my exercise a bit more if I wasn't having this urinary leakage. Okay. Or maybe I would enjoy Kerry's class a lot more if I wasn't if I wasn't worried about, well, I've had a traumatic birth, what, what is that dragging inside? Yeah. Or that, so I think, so I think people are being proactive in, in kind of getting help. Yeah, you're right, aren't you? That of all the, the negatives that we talk about, everything brings opportunity. Yeah, and exactly. Days can be frantic. There is a bit more time now in the world to do exactly that and look after yourself a little bit. So Gerard. But I think, I think one thing, one thing that I have really seen, and, and, and this has become very evident, say, with patients that we were seeing before the middle of March, before lockdown. Yeah. So they may have been uh, kind of your normal pelvic health patients. Yeah. And what, what a lot of them have said to us is that, you know, I've had a bit of a temporary setback, mm -hmm. but that temporary setback is, is, Due what they will say is because especially in that first week 10 days you know we were all really anxious yes. a lot of us had a lot of stress a lot of us weren't sleeping well so, yeah. a lot of us were dealing with a lot of kind of uh, a lot of things that were quite new to us and i think that added stress and anxiety you know it's not good for urinary frequency where people have a bit of bladder sensitivity it's not good for urinary incontinence. Yeah. It's not good for people who have maybe a bowel issue where they're having some lack of confidence with wind and kind of controlling stool. Um, and it's not good. It, you know, it, it, it causes this real stress response where we're turned on all the time. So we're not sleeping. We're waking up at four or five in the morning, switched on. And that you know, pumps a lot of adrenaline around, and that's not good for pelvic girdle pain. That's yep. not good for postnatal pain. It's it's really detrimental for pelvic pain. So I think those patients. It just highlighted to me that uh, you know it has caused those reactions in all of us, but particularly in patients. And I think it's it was quite nice for the patients to hear. Well, actually, you know, probably the reason your condition has has had a bit of a flare up is it's nothing that you've done. It's the fact of what is going on around us. And that, that is quite reassuring to hear for patients, I feel. Absolutely. I've definitely had quite a few clients with flare ups exactly around those kind of stress levels. So no, most definitely. So Gerard, what would be your kind of top tips at the moment for clients who are perhaps struggling and might be watching this video at home? So I suppose I, I suppose what I've always said really is that it's important, even though it's difficult, it is important to find time for you. It is important to find time for you to get good care for yourself. And if you have conditions like urinary symptoms, tummy gap, pain, bowel prolapse although we are in the middle of COVID-19 you can still get help from that so we can still see you for an online appointment I think the second thing is that all of these conditions are really common but they are not normal they are not normal you know it's not normal for a woman in her mid thirties who's maybe had one child, maybe a second child to be unable to exercise. I think also there is a lot of 
uh, kind of misinformation going around on social media about COVID-19. I think if you have concerns about COVID, how COVID-19 may affect you medically during your pregnancy, or, or you're concerned about how it might affect you in your postnatal period for your baby, it's, this is quite good timing because the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists published some new information yesterday on pregnancy, postnatal and COVID-19. So if you're thinking, well, how is COVID-19, if you're worried about this, which a lot of, a lot of mums or mums-to-be are, if you put into Google the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecology pregnancy, COVID-19, that will come up. And it's, it's written in a way for patients as well. Yeah, I think so important when it comes to information. Like that. Yeah, because I, I think the, the, there's a lot of scaremongering. I think that my more probably specific tips for the conditions that we see is exercise. We, you and I know that exercise is really important. Absolutely. And I think it's important to make time for that exercise. And I don't say that lightly because I've had, you know, I have four children, Kerry has small children. We know, we know it's not easy. We're living that, it's real. <laughs> yeah. But it's important to make time to get out of the house because we are allowed to go out once a day to exercise and i think although this may not be easy i think during the week it would be good for the mums to get out of the house on their own at least maybe once twice a week just to get that little bit of headspace bit of a break from the from the the the, the kind of normal challenges of of home life I think the, the anxiety and worry, it will make things a little bit worse. So I think it's time, it's, it's good to maybe find time for doing some relaxed breathing that I know Kerry's really good at, to do some headspace, to do some kind of mindfulness. Even short bursts are very helpful. It is, and there are some brilliant resources out there from Calm and Headspace and other people that have been released for free at the moment that you don't have to pay to access. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and it, it's good to, to, to not so much find time, because if you have to wait to find time, you probably won't, is to create time, is to create time. We always want, you know, we always want people to do pelvic floor exercises, uh, but these are difficult to do because life is busy. But we're all we're all hand washing a lot now, so maybe what you could do with some of those hand washes is to do some of those fast pelvic floor exercises, some of those slow. And the advantage of doing them around the hand washing is that most people will wash their hands in standing, and we also want people to do pelvic floor exercises in very standing functional positions. Absolutely. I think it's also good to say that. That you know, Kerry, you and I always talk about. Well, when should when when might when when might we expect someone to start running, or when might we expect someone to do impact exercise? If someone's had an uncomplicated uh, pregnancy and delivery, I think so. I think during this period of really intense stress, anxiety, uncertainty, it's good to really take the pressure off yourself and just let's move those dates back a bit. You know, give yourself give yourself more time to put yourself under less pressure and also put your body under less pressure. And, you know, another common thing that sometimes people get postnatally is, is this feeling of internal kind of dragging or heaviness kind of vaginally, um, which can be sometimes suggestive of a mild prolapse. And... I think at the minute, especially if you look on Facebook, and I suppose we've kind of joked about it a bit, people feel because they're at home, they, they should be decorating. They should be doing the garden. They should be growing vegetables. They should be starting a mini allotment out the back. But if you're postnatal, that's probably not the best thing to be doing, particularly if you're having those other types of symptoms. So it's almost, you know, giving your body time to heal time to restore and time to get strong and also 
you know, as as Kerry has said previously, you know, find your community of mums online, local to where you live. And if when you're ready to train, find someone like Kerry who has got the expertise, the experience to, tr to, to work with you. Normality will return, absolutely, and those communities are so... Yes, and, 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 it, it, yeah, yeah. and it will return, it will return. And then what I'll share as well is on our, on our website, we've just done a blog on kind of top tips for uh, uh, kind of new mums and mums with older kids of... Uh, during COVID-19 and there's some really useful information there so just give me one moment Brilliant. Yeah, that'd be great to be able to share that exactly that there's a lot of information around but we want the we want quality information from nice reputable sources like yourself so if you go on the website so it's harbourandphysio.co.uk yeah. and then if you if you go into media uh-huh and if you just click on the blog, it'll just take a minute or so because it's it's kind of going through Zoom as well. Yeah, no, it always takes a slight bit longer. So here we have just top tips for new and experienced mums during COVID-19. Brilliant. Now I'll be sure to have a read. And then the other thing we've put up is just to make it clear that, you know, we're, we're still here is how the video appointments work, wow. explaining what it involves and also how to book an appointment. So you can book a mummy MOT appointment or uh, if you have a specific concern or problem, uh, a postnatal appointment. Spot on. That's exactly what we need, Gerard. So a really just a really big thanks to you, Kerry, because I know this is a this is a obviously Easter is a busy time for all of us with with uh, with young children. But at least uh, we may have COVID-19, but we have some sunshine. We do. The, the world's still a good place. True. No. So it's been it's been really it's, it's always a pleasure to to meet up with you, Kerry. And uh, we probably didn't think five weeks ago that we would be meeting via zoom that would seem a bit strange back then but hopefully yeah, we'll be able to meet again in person soon and hopefully do some more combined clinics as well because that was really beneficial it the last time we did that yeah definitely no really appreciate your time gerard thank you so much have a fabulous bank holiday excellent enjoy your easter bye bye, bye.